Hey Polish fans, it's Caroline again and welcome to another video here at Wild Wind Locker. In today's video we are continuing on with part three, sorting of my keeps pile from mystery boxes from about two years ago. So as I'm doing the sorting I'm doing three different things. I'm trying to find polishes to compare to my backlog of Orly swatches. I'm also looking for polishes to add to my nail polish app. I have been over these a couple of times, but it definitely is a process to get them all added to a nail polish app. I'm also looking to see if any of my opinions have changed since I initially saw these or went through these for the second time with that huge haul of estate polish that I got of over 2000 bottles last year. Maybe some of these might now seem like duplicates or maybe my tastes have changed. My tastes are always sort of evolving and changing and who knows, we might find some that I can de-stash. I think the last two videos I did a pretty good job at finding a handful or so to de-stash. So let's go ahead and dig in. The first one is Sassy Pants Polish. Ooh, you so fancy. <laughs> this one was from the Maker's Dozen. August 2019. It was bottle 23 of just 40 bottles. This one I think is a box that doesn't do collabs anymore, but it was a dozen brands that got together and each month they were assigned a color. And this one must have been either green or teal. And it's got a bunch of these beautiful gold holographic shards in them. This one's definitely not going anywhere. I do like it. I'm wondering if it's magnetic. Hmm. The swatch looks like it almost could be. Yeah, it is. Okay, so it is a magnetic. So yeah, that one's not going anywhere. That one is going to be added to my nail polish app. Next up, we have one from Different Dimension. This one is called I Love Someone with Autism. And this one is a beautiful, dark, kind of like charcoal -y hollow that has this larger particled iridescent blue flaky in it. This one's also not going anywhere. I need to add that to my rack. Next up, we have one from Candied Apple Polish. This is number 420. So this was a new to me brand when I unboxed it from that mystery box. And this one appears to be a glitter topper. It is loaded with these diamond green glitters, kind of like in a limey green. There's purple and white matte. And I think there's also some black shiny glitters in like a square. And I was just noticing I'm seeing some red in there as well, like a smaller size. This is very unusual. Um, trying to decide if I think I would actually wear something like this. It definitely is unusual. I think for the time being, I will go ahead and hold on to it. Oh, you know what? I just noticed it actually has skull and crossbones in it. <laughs> Do you see that? Oh my goodness. That is hilarious. Okay. Next up, we have one from Jindy Nails. This one is called Candyland. And this is actually a very cute white jelly crelly that has a lot of these, I think, sheer neon glitters. It's a very unusual mix. I do want to hold on to that one as well. Ooh, and we have a topper from Candy Lacquer. This is Unicorn Princess. This is another really fun one and a very unusual topper. Lots of different colors and shapes. We have these little tiny triangle hollows. We have... Uh, like flowers, like little pink flowers and then stars. So very cute. Definitely not going anywhere. Okay. This is actually one that I purchased. This is from pinup paint and this is Eartha. This one ended up in the wrong pile because it technically shouldn't have gone in this keepsies pile. It should have gone in my need to be added to my nail polish app pile already. Uh, but this one was a purchase that I made and it just wasn't in the nail polish app at the time. So this is not going anywhere. Next up, we have Lavish Polish Must Eat Brains, and this is very unusual, kind of a fleshy color with red hollow glitters. I do want to try this one out. I think that's why I ended up putting it in the keep pile, but you know what? I think we are going to go ahead and swatch it and see how I might like it on. So with these fleshy colors, sometimes I don't like how they look against my skin tone. The glitter is definitely what sort of made me hold on to this to see how I might like it. That's just one coat. Definitely got it nice and opaque with those two coats. And yeah, I don't know. I think with this one, it's just not very flattering on my skin tone. So I do think I'm going to go ahead and de-stash that lavish polish. 
Next up, we have one from Bohemian Polish. This is Oi to the World. This is a beautiful multi-chrome with some like micro flakies in here or maybe even glitter. Is this one amagnetic? No, it is not. Okay, but it is beautiful. Not going anywhere. I need to add that to my app. Ooh, we have a Moonshine Manny. It's National Penelope Day, so... And this is also not going anywhere. I definitely need to add that to my rack, my app. We have an Elegy. This one is called A Hat Delivery Service. This is also not going anywhere. This needs to be added to my nail polish app. It is gorgeous. Next, we have a Native War Paints. This is Lotus. Also not going anywhere. This is absolutely stunning. It is a nice, rich shade of pink that has hollow and shimmer. Next up, oh, we have another Linderella. So this one actually does at least have a name. Quite a few of the polishes that I have from this brand that I got in mystery boxes only have a little picture on them, which does make it hard to figure out what the names are. But this one is a cute little light green. It has hollow and shimmer. Yeah, that's not going anywhere either. That is going to be added. We have an LA Colors. This one is Fig. And this is a beautiful, like, deep berry in a cream. Also not going anywhere, although I will say those colors will need to be compared at some point to the rest of my collection. Next up, we have this little four-piece set from Simply Swirls. So we have a yellow, a mint, a, like, fuchsia berry, and a light gray that has some purple components. Or maybe it is light purple. Yeah, I think it might be a light purple. These bottles definitely need a good shake. But these were all really cute colors. The fuchsia one, which is painting the roses red. Oh, that's it. These were all from Alice in Wonderland. So we have Eat Me, Who Are You, Painting the Roses Red, and We're All Mad Here. That is definitely one of the biggest reasons why these didn't go anywhere. Um, the yellow, I will say, is probably my least favorite, but I am trying to hold on to some yellows. This is also in a shade of yellow, kind of like a sunshine yellow that I could probably see myself using at least in nail art. Mint, of course, I love. Purple, of course, I love. And berries, I like as well. So all of these are going to stay. We have a half-size Deborah Lippmann. This is Hello. This is in a color that I do have a lot of. I know I need to do comparisons of this color. It kind of reminds me of like Essie Merino Cool as well, which is another polish that I know I have somewhere. But yeah, for the time being, that's not going anywhere until I can do, again, those comparisons. We have a Paint It Pretty Red Night Sky. This is a beautiful one. Again, not going anywhere. Need to add that to my app. We have a half size from Indigo Bananas. This is Aqua Flame. This is another one that is not going anywhere. I definitely need to find out if it's in the app and if not, add it. But this is a beautiful multi-chrome with iridescent flakes. Ooh, we have another from Pin Up Paint. This is another one that I know I purchased. So this was just another instance where it wasn't in the app yet. This one is called Barbie. And this is an absolutely stunning shade for fall. Absolutely beautiful. Not going anywhere. Next up, we have a 77 nail lacquer. This is another one of their mystery 77s. So this is an instance where I do need to set the mysteries and unnamed prototypes aside and try to find some names for them. So again, if you have any suggestions or ideas about how to do that, how to come up with a theme or where to pull inspiration, that's always something that I have a hard time with is narrowing my scope of creativity. <laughs> because there are so many ways you can name a polish from basing it on the color to basing it on a movie to basing it on a theme. So there's so many different ways of doing it. Trying to find one that I want to do is hard. So let me know if you have any thoughts, but this is a really beautiful red, sort of a cherry red that has a pink shimmer in it. This is gorgeous. Next up, we have a lacquer is in the air. This is You Can't Kill the Boogeyman. This one is a light off-white. Could even be a light gray. There's hollow and sparkle. There's also a shimmer in there that's catching the light just faintly on camera. It is a little bit more noticeable in person. It's a little pink flash. I'm trying to decide, though, if this is one that I want to keep. It does kind of remind me of some of the other colors that I have, but maybe I'll hold on to it until I can do those comparisons. So we will go ahead and add that. We have another 77 nail lacquer and another mystery. This is another one, though, that is absolutely gorgeous. So again, I do need to find out how to name it and then add it to the app. 
Next up, we have one from Spellbound Nails. This is Wrath. This is another one that I do need to add. It is a pretty unusual red. The thing that makes it so interesting is it's got that red hollow, and then inside it's got these little red shards and maybe even glitter in there. So that I need to add as well. We have another from Pin Up Paint, and I must have just dumped all of my Pin Up Paint purchase in here if I couldn't find it in the app. This one is Jerry, and this is another beautiful fall shade. I should have had all of these on my fall nail polish rack, and reason I didn't is I had buried them in here. So one of the reasons why I definitely need to get all of the ones that I am keeping into my circulation so that I can be more aware of what I have. And hopefully soon, now that I'm in my nail polish room, I can get all of those things organized so that I can actually find polish to want to wear it. But that one's definitely not going anywhere. Next up, we have a pampered polish. This one has lost its little name, but it is a very cute kind of dusty shade of pink that is a kitchen sink full of goodies. So that one I need to figure out what it's named. I am going to set that one aside because it doesn't have a label though. We have a Hit Polish. This one is Bloodstone. Ooh, so this is not going anywhere either. This is a pretty good replica of that stone and I do want to hold on to that one. I don't know that I have any other polishes from that brand either. We have one from Zombie Claw. This is Pumpkin Cream. Another instance of a beautiful fall polish that I didn't get a chance to wear because it was buried in this tote. So this one also needs to get added to my nail polish app. Next up, we have one from Love and Beauty by Forever 21. And this one is called Emerald. Next up, we have another from Maybelline in their Colorama line. This is one that I got in a Goodwill bag. And this one is called Blazes of Crystal. This is another one that is not going anywhere. I was really excited to find these in that Goodwill bag. This is a beautiful flaky sheer polish. We have a few more minis from Deborah Lemon, looks like. The first one is called Senorita. And this is a beautiful, like, deep fuchsia, almost leaning into red. I do want to hold on to that for some comparisons. Next up, we have Stone Cold. This is another sort of gray leaning, light, light purple. And again, with comparisons, I definitely want to hold on to that one. The next one is Cheap Thrills. This one, I don't think I really have anything to compare it to, but I mean, look how beautiful that is. So holding on to that one as well. Next up, we have a thermal from Color Spectrum Polish. This is Kitty, Where Is My Door? That is adorable. Maybe that's the cold phase and this is the warm phase. However, I don't think it's still transitioning because, let's see, yeah, 920. So this is from 2020. Seems that the thermal might have died, but it is still very pretty. I think I might play around with seeing if this would make a good topper. We have another Deborah Lippmann mini. This is Blue Monday. Uh, ooh, actually, I wonder if this would compare to Unraveling Story from Orly. That is one of the grays that I'm doing a comparison of. So Deborah Littman's Blue Monday, I think I'm going to add to that pile of colors that I have been pulling. Next up, we have a red-eyed lacquer. This is I Think I Need a Hug. And this one's not going anywhere either. I just need to make sure to add this to the nail polish app that I have. It's very beautiful. Next up, we have one from Pretty Woman. This one is I Feel Pretty. This is a nice vibrant shade of pink in a cream. So this is another color I'll definitely have to do comparisons of, but I do like it. Next up, we have one from Zombie Claw. This is Campfire Spooks. This is another one that I just need to add to the app. I really like it. And again, I would have worn this in fall had I had it out. <laughs> Next up, we have a Sinful Colors. This one has lost its little name tag. So is it worth checking out? It is just a blue cream, not super unique. Yeah, I think I'm okay just letting this one go. I'm not that interested in trying to track down a cream. It would be one thing if it had a shimmer to it and I could make a little bit of a guesstimate that way, but it is just a blue cream. I think I'm just going to go ahead and de-stash it. Next up, we have another from Candy Lacquer. This is the Little Mermonster. This is another one that has a beautiful glitter mix. Very unusual. But this one is kind of odd as well as unique. It's got big circle glitters. There are teal and aqua glitters. There's random red glitters, black glitters. So for this one, let's see, where's that other one that I did keep? Oh, here we go. So the one that had more like neon colors, I definitely like it. Also has those little stars and triangle glitters in hollow. This one has more aquas, greens, and then yellows, which is kind of 
interesting. And it's all in this kind of squishy green. I am wondering though if this is maybe not a topper. The other one was definitely a squishy base. I'm not seeing any pigment in here that needs redistributed. Whereas this one, I almost feel like there is a pigment in there that is adding a color to the base. Let's go ahead and, and swatch this. I'm going to give it a really good shake and then swatch it. Very chunky, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. There's stars in here as well. So this one is kind of hard to apply because it is so full of glitter. So I'm trying to move the pieces around. But in doing so, I feel like I'm moving a lot of the smaller glitters away. I know I saw a lot more as I was doing this first coat that aren't on here anymore because I was getting too much glitter. But I want to say I had seen like a little tiny red star, which is not on the nail anymore. There's also like a random orange glitter and yellow glitter. So yeah, kind of, kind of um, odd. <laughs> All right, let's do a second coat. Got a black glitter out that time, but it seems like a lot of the other shapes that I was getting first round didn't make it back under the brush. Like that little star that I had, I don't see that anymore. I did get a pink glitter though there. And like I said, a black glitter up there at the end of the nail. There's also a hollow glitter there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about this one. It's kind of kitchen sinky all over the place. And I mean, I used to really love kitchen sink polishes, but I usually prefer them to have some sort of a cohesive thing that pulls them together. Random spots of like the red and the black in the space. I just for myself don't feel like this is something that I would enjoy that much on because of all the randomness. So I think I am going to go ahead and let that one go. Next up, we have a Femme Fatale. This is another one that has lost its little name tag. This one is a gray hollow that has some silver glitters in it. And this is one of my favorite brands. So I did hold on to this for mainly that reason. Also, I do like my grays. Of course, uh, this is another one that I would have to find the name of in order to add it to my nail polish app. And am I willing to do that? Yeah, I think for the time being, I will hold on to it. I'll, I'll see if I can't figure out what the name is. We have another half size Deborah Lemon. This is Boys in Berry. Another just cream color, but it is very pretty. I think I want to hold on to that one as well. We have another pin of paint. So yeah, it seems a lot of my purchase from them uh, early last year or maybe late 2022 ended up just getting put in the wrong tote. But this one is life form and this is definitely not going anywhere either. This is absolutely stunning. I just need to add them to my nail polish app if they're not there already. We have a very separated color club. This one is called French Tip. So I do have a lot of white polishes. I have been keeping quite a lot of them to do some comparisons of, but this is a brand new bottle and in very good shape. So at least for the time being, I'll go ahead and hold on to it. Although I think I will go ahead and put it in the not important pile because I don't need to add it to my collection. I just don't want to get rid of it yet. So it'll go over there. Next up, we have a bow polish. This is Fit for a King. Again, not going anywhere. I adore this polish. I just need to get it out so I know about it. And again, this is another color I would have worn or at least tried to wear for fall. Next up, we have a 1422 Designs. This is Queen at 18. This is in aqua that has some multi-chrome flakies and some silver shimmer. Now, this one is very pretty. I'm just not feeling it at the moment. So I think I will go ahead and just de-stash it. I am trying to get to that point with my collection long ways to go, not even anywhere close, but I am trying to work on getting my collection to a point where I love all of the polish. Now, I know that that's not going to be the case across the board because in some cases, like when you're dealing with a simple cream, I might not love it, but it is helpful. So creams are going to be one of those instances where I need them to be helpful and funner polishes like Indies, I need to love them. So for this one, I'm just sort of on the fence, which means that's going to get de-stashed. All right, next up we have a mini bonbons and this one I think has lost its name tag or maybe the minis just weren't really named, but this one I kept because of sentiment. Um, There's actually another one here, a little orange one. And yeah, these just remind me of my childhood because I am an 80s baby and a 90s child. 
and these just take me back. So I am going to hold on to both of those. Next up, we have one from Elise. This is another one that has lost its name tag. This is one of those creams aren't actually, I think it was right here. Yeah, Rusty Treasure. Perfect. So I just need to glue that one back on. And I do want to hold on to this. It's a beautiful rusty orange. I just need to make sure that I don't lose that name tag. This is another instance I know that I have to do comparisons of because I do love my rusty oranges, but we'll see how that goes at a later date. Next up, we have another Pretty Woman. Very similar, actually, to that other Pretty Woman pink. Very similar. There might be a subtle difference. I don't know if you can see a difference on camera. The new one that has no name might be a touch darker. That one is a very pretty color. How different does it seem than the one that we kept, which was I Feel Pretty? Honestly, I can't tell. <laughs> okay, so I did end up doing a swatch of those two to see how they compare. And I do think there's a subtle difference. The one that doesn't have a name is over here and I Feel Pretty is over here. Both of these are just in a single coat. I Feel Pretty is a little bit more dusty and then the new one that has no label is a bit more vibrant and brighter. So, I mean, that could be a difference in just bottle to bottle. One might have faded. I do think I like the one that has no label better. So we're going to do a little switcheroo and I feel pretty is actually going to go in the D stash and I'm going to hold on to the new one that has no name. Hopefully I can find out what it's called. Next up, we have one from Nail Hoop. This is Rolling Stone. And this is a white curly with black matte glitters and a light wash of this larger particle shimmer. So very cute little mix there. I like those little square glitters. Just trying to decide if I think I would actually wear this. And I am questioning that long enough for me to just go ahead and de-stash that one. We have a cream from Sally Hansen. This is Cruisin' Blue. This is kind of your standard turquoise leaning bright pool blue. Although there's almost this dusty quality to it, which I don't know if that would come across dusty on the nail or not, but I, with these colors, this particular one does lean kind of unexciting to me. And I do feel like I have a lot in this shade range. So I think I will go ahead and de-stash Cruise in Blue. Next up, we have another from Love and Beauty by Forever 21. This one is called Light Blue, very original. <laughs> this one is a blue polish that has a golden gleam to it. And it is pretty. I'm just not in love with the golden gleam. And yeah, this is another instance where I do feel like I might have a lot of colors in this range. So I think I will de-stash that one as well. Next up, we have another pretty woman and another one that has no name tag. This is a very beautiful kind of mulberry cream. Oh, and it's a jelly. Yeah, I think I'll go ahead and hold on to it because it is a jelly. Uh, it has no name tag though, so I'm going to put that again over into the not in a hurry pile because I'm going to have to do some research on it. We have another pretty woman that again has no name tag and this one is a light purple leaning gray. This is again another color family that I just really, really enjoy. I have quite a few in this color range because I do enjoy it on and I like this one. This one kind of has a squish factor to it as well, so I'm going to hold on to this until I can do those comparisons, but also, again, I'm going to have to research it, so it's going to go over into the not-in-a-hurry pile. We have another pretty woman that has also lost its name tag. This one seems like it could also be sort of a squishy formula. Yeah, I think so. Very dark berry, like a berry purple. That is very pretty, though. So, again, I will hold on to it. It's just not going to be one that I hurry to add because I will have to research it. We have a Sephora by OPI. This is I'm with Brad. And this is a dark, dark color that has a red shimmer in it. Also not going anywhere. I just need to add that to the app. We have a China Glaze that was in a bit of a mess when I got it. This one is Flying High. And I think I will just go ahead and hold on to that. I, I still just don't feel like dealing with the cleanup just yet. We have one from Sugar Pill, and this one is called Catmosphere. This one I've been holding on to because it's just too adorable. The brand logo has a little kitty cat on it, plus this curly is very cute. So that one I also need to add to my app. We have one from Flormar. Interesting. The color is Funky Magenta. Now this is another instance where it is a cream. 
So not super exciting, but they are, of course, helpful in a collection. Is this unique? I do feel like I have a number in this shade range, and it's not the most vibrant. I think I do want to hold on to it, though. I will put it in the not important pile, though, because I'll add it later. We have one from the Nail Bazaar. This is Minimum Wage, a green with a green shimmer. Now, I've said before, I'm not super in love with primary shades, and this one is kind of a primary, but there's also something that is kind of interesting about this, and I don't know if it's the tone-on-tone -tone shimmer or what it is, but I do want to hold on to this one, so Minimum Wage just needs to get added to my app as well. We have another pretty woman that has lost its name tag. Seems to be a common occurrence with this brand as well. This one is a vibrant shade of hot pink. Again, kind of squishy. I like it though. I, this is another instance though. Again, comparisons, 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 but we'll see how that goes at a later date. We have one from Ari. This is Mary. This is gorgeous. This needs to get added. This would actually make a beautiful winter polish that needs to get added for sure. Ooh, we have a color club that has also lost its name tag. Oops, I just noticed we have a loose label that needs to go to somebody. This one is called Jack and Sally. Oh, we'll hold on to it. <laughs> Anyways, the color club is a beautiful dark fuchsia, beautiful shade. I just need to figure out again what it is called. We have another from Elise. This one has lost its name tag. It's another beautiful shade though, so I do want to hold on to this and see if I can't figure out what it's called. We have one from Sally Hansen in their Extreme Wear line. This is Blue Blitz. I was going to say, this one sounds familiar, but the other one that I have that's also a Sally Hansen in here is Baby Blue or Babe Blue. This one actually reminds me of Bikini Sotini by Essie. So I do want to hold on to this for some comparisons to that. So that's going to be a keeper. This other one is more of like an aqua. So just to, to compare it, by comparison, Babe Blue is almost like a cornflower blue. There's more aqua in Blue Blitz. And Blue Blitz has a pink to gold shifting larger particle shimmer. Also not going anywhere. That's very pretty. We have a Sally Hansen again in the Insta Dry line. And this is white on time. So again, like I said before, I have been holding on to a number of white or off-white polishes, and eventually I do plan on coming back and doing some comparisons again, but like I said, at this point I am needing to compare my entire collection. I think I'll hold on to it though, because I don't know how varied it might be from the other shades of white, and you just never know. So I will hold on to that one. Next up we have one from Jade, and this is one of their hollows, Sedukao Rosa. Oh yeah, that is gorgeous. So it's a like magenta fuchsia hollow. We're going to hold on to that one as well. Next up, we have one from Starly. This looks like a glitter topper called Goosebumps. So this is another instance where I know I need to do comparisons. I have at this point at least a handful of toppers from this brand and maybe not just this brand that has a bunch of round glitter. So I need to make sure that I haven't inadvertently duped myself, but these can be very helpful. So I need to just add that to my app. We have one from LA Colors. This one is Dazzle. Now this is one of those kinds of finishes that I really love in the bottle, but once I put it on my nails, it seems to just turn metallic. So I don't really end up seeing the finish, at least how it appears in the bottle, but there it is on the wand. It's a very pretty color, so I think I am going to hold on to this one as well. This one came off of one of the bottles. I don't know which one. Very pretty color, though. We have one from Maniology. This one seems to have no name either, but this one is a gray, a dark gray that has a shifting shimmer. So again, we'll hold on to it, but I'm going to have to do some research to find out what it is. We have an ILNP called Pink Mimosa. This is a nice metallic color. I'm just not sure if I might like this one on because this is a very light metallic. And, and what I mean by light is tone-wise, there's not a lot of richness to this. But let's go ahead and swatch it. You never know. So on one coat, actually, that could make a beautiful topper over some colors. Hmm. That is very pretty in one coat. There's a lot going on. Ooh, I might have to actually keep that as a 
topper. I'll just have to remember to put it in my topper section and not in my regular collection. But let's go ahead and see how a second coat looks. Kind of a thin formula. It could have been watered down with some nail polish thinner at some point as well. But there it is in two coats. This could be a three coater. I guess it's not that bad against my skin tone. Again, not the most exciting, but I do love that potential for topper possibilities. So we're going to keep that one. And last one, you guys, this is a sinful colors called Sucker Punch. So this is another color category that I know I'm going to have to do comparisons of, but I do like this enough to hold on to it for the time being. So that means that I found eight more polishes to de-stash. And I think I only ended up finding one color to do comparisons of with the Plot Twist collection. So that still continues to be difficult to find comparisons for, but hopefully I can find more across the rest of my already existing collection. So that wraps up the sorting. That means I have this massive box actually of polish right there that I'm going to have to add to my nail polish rack. That is going to be quite the project. So basically what happens is the nail polish app is a huge database. And if a polish that you want to add isn't in there, you have to create the polish first and then add it. But we'll see how that goes. Hopefully at least uh, some of them are already in there now. It has been, like I said, about two years since I did the initial haul of these. So who knows? Maybe someone's already added a few of them. Save me some time. But in any case, hopefully you had a good time. If you're new, think about hitting that little subscribe button down below if you like nail polish content. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you in that next one.